Frank the Fox uh, VCR back up on the bench. This thing's been up a few times. I just did, did a video uh, to fix the video circuit on this, and I just noticed that the fluorescent display is not working on this one. So, in this video, we're going to take a look at what could be causing the fluorescent display not to work. Okay, fluorescent displays take a couple different voltages in order to operate. And if any of those voltages are missing, the display is not going to work. So the first thing we have to do is we have to get access to the display. So we'll remove the front panel. And then we can measure and see if we've got all of our voltages. It could be a problem power supply wise that's causing this. But the first thing we want to do is we want to check to make sure that we've got our, our grid voltage and our filament voltages. So let's just check our voltages going to the board from the power supply here and see whether we've got our positive and negative supply voltages. We need to have both a positive and negative supplies and we need our filament supply as well. So we have six volts, five volts, zero, 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 negative 28, negative 20, negative 20, 2.9, zero, zero, and three volts. So for a fluorescent display to work, you need both positive and negative voltages. Most fluorescent displays will have the filaments running at close to ground potential. If I measure on the filaments on this thing, we find that this thing has got negative 20 volts on both sides of the filaments. But we'll check and see if we've actually got any voltage difference across the filaments because we should have about one volt, one to two volts difference across the filaments and we have none we have nothing different here so I'm going to go back to the power supply and just take a look at the at the filament supply for the power supply because if there if there's no voltage difference across the filaments then we're going to have no current flowing through the filaments and we need to actually heat the filament up this is a vacuum tube the filament is heated up it works just like a conventional vacuum tube the filament actually uh, is, is heated up and uh, that's what allows the filament or the cathode to emit electrons. So if we don't have our heater working here or filament, we're not going to get any light. So let me just check the power supply and see whether we have a problem uh, in the power supply. Well, I just got the power supply apart and you see right here, it looks like we may have Houston, we may have a problem. That looks like a capacitor that's spilling its guts. In fact, when I wiggle that capacitor on the other side of the board, You can see that the lead is broken free. Let's uh, pull that cap out and clean it up and see. Maybe, maybe we'll get lucky and uh, that's the cause of the problem. But then again, it may be something else. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do the first things first. I'm just going to also look at these connections on these pins here to see how they look. But we definitely have a, a C24. C24 has, has definitely had some uh, leakage around here, so we'll uh, change out C24 first. It looks to be a 680 microfarad 16 volt cap. So I'm just waiting for the uh, soldering iron to warm up here. We'll pull this one and try changing this one first and uh, see whether that fixes the display. Well, I don't even need to uh, measure this one to, to know that it's bad, it's leaking. So let me find another one and uh, we'll try that out, but uh, definitely this one is bad. I'll see what I can find in my uh, junk bin. Okay, so I have a new part in here, well not a new part, but a used part. So we're going to put this into the board and see whether this one is going to fix the problem. And um, maybe that's all that was wrong, maybe not. But we'll find out once we get uh, the capacitor soldered in. I think my board is kind of a bit screwed here, so it's not going to solder down to the board. So I'm going to actually have to uh, make a little jumper wire here to jump over the uh, damaged section of the board. 
Okay, now we're gonna measure some voltages here after replacing the capacitor. I still see that the display is not working, so I'm just gonna check some voltages here. We got minus 19 volts here on my uh, meter, if you can see it. This is the filament coming off of the display. One side of the filament here is measuring minus 20. The other side of the filament is measuring minus 19.9. Might as well call that minus 20. Following that trace back, it goes to a resistor on the edge of the board here. It's a 4.7 ohm resistor. I got minus 20 volts on one side of it. And I got uh, minus 15 on the other side of this resistor. It's a 4.7 ohm resistor. I have a feeling that this resistor has probably gone open, so let's just pull it and check it. Okay, the resistor is out. Put the meter in resistance mode. It's a, say it's 4.7 ohms. And I have 485 ohms, 0.485K. So, um, yeah, that resistor is open and it is a, uh, it's a 4R7, so that's a 4.7 ohm. Let's replace that resistor. That's the dropping resistor for the filament. Okay, well, solder in the new resistor here. Get my light out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Give it power and I would have to say that the display is lighting up. Yep, the display is lighting up. So that was the problem. This resistor right here, R24, right down here in the bottom corner of the uh, power supply, this resistor, 4.7 ohms, went open. And this capacitor here also, of course, blew its guts all over the place. So we replaced the capacitor and uh, replaced the resistor, and that's got the display working. There's the old one that came out. So the power supply just drops back inside the back of the uh, cabinet. The nice thing about these units is they're quite modular, so it made it really easy to work on this thing. One of the easier machines to work on was uh, this design. It was um, compared to some of the stuff that was out there. This was one of the more easier to access as far as the individual parts go. You pull the power supply out, work on it separately. You take the main board out, work on it separately. Everything just unplugged from each other, right? panel just open up the front panel like that so that it goes over the uh, the lid lifter and we can put the main board back in place Tuck our wires back down where they belong in the front. And secure our board back in place. I 
And that will uh, complete the repair on this machine. And this one can then go back into service or back into storage. And as you have already seen before, it is working. And just for the record, this machine is from uh, July 28th, 1992, was when this machine was made. So we're talking a pretty old machine here. I hope you enjoyed this video of this, once again, JVC Mag Magnavox uh, unit. And I'm sure we'll see this one at some future date when something else goes wrong with it. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.